Hello and welcome to this third in our series of short videos on trade theories. In this video we'll be looking at comparative advantage, an idea developed by David Ricardo in the 19th century. I'll be showing an example on this, a fairly simple one. In another video later we'll go through a more complicated example. OK, let's get started. Let's imagine a world where there are only two people and only two products. We're going to have Mary here and Peter. They can both produce either radios or cloth. Let's have a look at their production possibilities for radios. Using all her resources, Mary can produce 100 radios and Peter can produce 400 radios. So we can see that Peter is better at producing radios than Mary, so we could say he has an absolute advantage in radio production. Let's have a look at cloth. Again, the same thing holds. Using all her resources, Mary can produce 100 pieces of cloth. Peter can produce 200 pieces. Again, Peter is better at producing cloth than Mary. He has an absolute advantage. And this illustrates David Ricardo's point that even if you have an absolute advantage in producing everything, you will still be better off concentrating on the things that you are comparatively better at producing than the other person and then trading. Let's see an example to show this. It's a little bit counterintuitive at first. All right then, let's imagine that Mary and Peter divide their resources in two and use half of their resources for producing radios and half for producing cloth. Mary produces 50 radios, 50 cloths. Peter, 200 radios and 200 cloths. Again, I'd like to emphasize, Peter has an absolute advantage in both of these products. Now let's see what happens if they try to specialize in producing the thing that they are relatively better at. And to calculate this comparative advantage, we need to find out who has the lowest opportunity cost. So comparative advantage equals lowest opportunity cost. All right, what would happen if Mary wanted to produce one extra radio? Well, it takes her the same amount of resources to produce radios as cloths. So one extra radio, she would have to stop producing one cloth. For Peter, on the other hand, he's much better at producing radios, twice as good, actually, than producing cloths. So one extra cloth would cost him two radios. And conversely, one extra radio would only cost him half a cloth. So who has the comparative advantage? Well, for Mary, her opportunity costs for either item is one. For Peter, the opportunity cost for cloth is two radios. So each extra piece of cloth costs him two radios worth of production. Its opportunity cost for radios is half a cloth. So therefore, in cloth production, Mary has the lowest opportunity cost, one radio over Peter, two radios. So Mary should concentrate on producing cloth. And for radios, for Mary, one radio cost one cloth. For Peter, one radio only costs half a cloth. So he has the lowest opportunity costs, and therefore he should concentrate on producing radios. Let's see what happens if they specialize and only produce the things in which they have a comparative advantage. So Mary is producing 100 pieces of cloth with all her resources, and Peter is producing 400 radios with all of his resources. They're not producing the things which they do not have a comparative advantage in. Let's have a look at the scenario then. Previous total radios 250, we're now producing 400, which means the world is better off by 150 radios. And for cloth, Previously, they were producing 150, now 100. So now we have a little problem. There are actually 
50 pieces of cloth fewer than before. Let's see what they can do about that. So let's imagine Peter says, OK, we still need 150 pieces of cloth. I will make 50 pieces of cloth. And in doing that, he has to sacrifice radio production. And remember that each piece of cloth costs him two radios. So here we have the 50 cloths here would cost him 100 radios. So instead of 400 radio production, he's now producing 300. So in the end, we have a total of 300 radios produced and 100 cloths, meaning a net gain of 50 radios for Peter and Mary. And so that is the principle of comparative advantage, showing that even countries that have an absolute advantage in producing all things can gain by specialising in producing the things which they are relatively better at than other nations. And this is the basis of most modern trade theories. And the validity of this theory does seem to show up in empirical data. There are some modifications that we need to make, but generally it's a valid idea.